guys, nice to see you. Okay, so today we're going to look at the coziest place in our house, which is in the universe. In the universe, which is our bed. And I think beds are really interesting to look at because they mean so many different and things comfy. to different people. They're comfy, they're cozy, they're our very personal space. It's a space where we have to be really relaxed because we sleep there. So we have to be comfortable but, enough to actually let ourselves go to sleep. But also sometimes when I'm angry or sad, I lock myself in my room <laughs> and I and I lie on my bed crying. Yes, or exactly. Or punching my pillows. Or punching your pillows, exactly. The bed is a place to heal. It's a place to go when we're ill. It's a place when we're tired. And it's also a cozy place where we can Also when we're time. angry or sad. Also, it's <laughs> no communication. <laughs> The kitten just fell off the table. Hello, boy. And Joey smells of chocolate cake. He smells of chocolate cake? <gasps> Maybe he was a victim. Did he eat a whole piece of chocolate cake? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's fat enough to have eaten that. He doesn't look that fat. All His right. breath just smells good. Back to the, <laughs> back to the art class. Oh my god, it's a menagerie. Okay. <laughs> Today we're going to look at the coziest place in the house your bed. We spend almost half of our lives in our beds. They are our safe, cozy place where we can relax, but also where we go if we're feeling sad or unwell. Artists have painted beds, painted in bed, and even taken their beds to be displayed in galleries. Today we're going to learn about conceptual art and make sculptures of our most cozy place. Bed. Bedrooms are a deeply personal space, a place that only our family and closest friends see. This is a painting of a bedroom by William Turner. He is mostly famous for painting clouds and landscapes, but he painted lots of bedrooms too. Maybe the softness of the fabrics is a bit like painting clouds. See how he has used the colour to make the fire and bed look warm and cosy, but the rest of the room looks grey and cold. Turner was a painter around 200 years ago. He was British and he was mainly famous for painting clouds and skies and landscapes and his clouds were really stormy and swirly and I think that might be why he liked painting bedrooms so much because I think painting fabric and cushions and soft things is a little bit like painting clouds because you see the sort of it's the same sort of textures yeah um, so Frida Kahlo spent so much time in her bed that a lot of her artworks were painted while she was in bed like this she um painted her actual bed in her paintings as well so this is a paint one of her famous paintings whoa and she had this this bed that she that you see quite a bit in her different paintings that would be kind of creepy having a skeleton lying on top <laughs> yeah so this painting is about a dream and the reason she featured her bed in there was because to her it felt like it was a safe place for her to be, but it was also a symbol of the pain she was in. And it sort of became like this cozy prison that she couldn't get out of. And so, although she was very comfortable and although she was in her own house, it sort of became a symbol of the limitations on her life. Now, the interesting thing about Frida Kahlo is she was so famous for being in bed because when she had her first and only solo exhibition, she actually was told by the doctor she was too ill to get out of bed and she had to stay in bed. So what she did, she said, that's fine, just take my kitten. She said, that's fine, just take my bed to the gallery and I'll sit in my bed in the gallery. And that's what she did. And at the exhibition opening, her bed was there and she was lying in bed and all the people came to see her art. Um, that is crazy. It's crazy, isn't it? She's kind of a rebel. She is a rebel, yeah. She definitely is a rebel. So you think of um, a bed as a place that's very private and it's just in our own home. But what happens when you put a bed into a gallery space and it becomes no, a really public... this is the thing that I was arguing with you before. I know, but just listen. <laughs> Elliot and I have been having an argument about conceptual art this afternoon. Um, okay, so this is actually... When it was Frida Kahlo's, what would have been her 112th birthday, The people, some people in Mexico City made a huge model of her and in her bed and they paraded it through the streets. Isn't that cool? That is massive! Yeah. So another artist who has become very famous um, 
and sort of defined by her bed is a woman called Tracy Emin. Now, Tracy Emin was, is still making art today and she was most famous at the end of the 90s, um, which is about 20 years ago. Um, and she was one of the YBA artists, which is the Young British Artists. And they did lots of conceptual things that at the time, lots of people thought, that's not art, that's just garbage. Taco, taco. But everything is art. Well, that's right. Is everything art? Does yes. art have to be a picture? This is what no. I've been arguing with you about. <laughs> okay, so. I've also been arguing with Peppa Pig because. No, we're not talking about Peppa Pig right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, the thing that Tracy Emin did that was so. Oh, my goodness. Taco. Okay, Elliot, can you sit on your seat, please? I've oh, got their bottoms on seats. Yeah. Okay, you sit with Taco, so he's not sad. Taco can see the other dog outside in the park, and that's why he wants to go out to the park. Yeah. Right, so the thing that Tracy Emin did that was so crazy was she put her bed in the oh. art gallery. Oh! What? And she didn't put her bed in looking all nice and neat. She put it in absolutely normal. filthy, messy. And normal. She, and completely normal. Completely normal. Usually when we see a bed in a museum or in a... Um, Picture. Yeah, in a sort of historical context. Like you can go to Henry VIII's house and see his bed and the bed is all made and it's all done. She has put her bed in. Look at it. She's got drinks down the side of it. She's even got um, some dirty knickers. She's got tights. She's got tissues. She's got That's all sorts like of stuff. That's like my bed. Yeah, it's just a mess. It's just an absolute mess. And this really shocked people. People said, that's not art, that's ridiculous, that's just moving something into an art gallery. That's what I'm saying. Everything is saying. art! So, this sort of art is called um, conceptual art. And often we think about art as being a painting or something that you, takes a long time to do and has to look very realistic. I mean, I guess that would take quite a long time. You would have yeah. to set it all up. Sleep, you, would have to, you would have to even sleep in the gallery. In order to look well, yes. So art doesn't have to be something like a drawing or a painting or, or something you would hang on the wall in your house. Art can actually be just about ideas. It can be about a concept that makes people think. And the thing about conceptual art is that the artist wants everyone to come and look at an object. It might be an object. It could be um, it could be sounds. It could be a room full of mist. Um, it could be all sorts of different things. But the the artist wants you to experience it, and then you bring your own ideas to the piece of art. So they won't tell you the meaning of the artwork. You have to come to it and think, what does this mean? Why has the artist done this? And everyone might come up with a slightly different meaning. I would be artwork. like, well, she just wants to express herself. She would want... I mean, like, it can be kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah, well, like, if you're in an argument yeah. with someone and you can't talk to each other by doing it because it would just make you feel worse by talking, you could, you could do art and show... Yeah, yeah, you can do it. It's a form of expression, absolutely. Yeah. You can show someone what you think. So the story behind the bed was that Tracy Emin had had a really bad week. She had a terrible week. She broke up with her boyfriend. Oh, that is a bad And she went to bed crying, and she stayed in her bed for days and days. And she just ate junk food and drank vodka and was really, really sad for days on end. And then when she finally got out of bed, she came back into the... She went had a shower and came back and looked at the bed and thought wow it looks like a sculpture or it looks like a painting by Turner the way all the sheets had been all swirled around the way all the stuff you know like those you know those sort of still life paintings where you see all the objects all lined up is there a whole bottle of vodka yeah I think there's a few bottles of vodka there my face. <laughs> <laughs> a dog fart happening Anyway, so the thing that I think we, we need to remember about conceptual art, here it is in a gallery with all these people staring at it. 
Now, this is a very personal thing to put in an art gallery. Can you imagine having your bed and your dirty knickers on the floor in an art gallery that hundreds of people will come and have a look at each day? I take loads of pictures. It's quite shocking, right? So the thing with this was that everyone will bring their own story to it. So some people might walk in and be like, oh, that looks just like my bed. Oh, it's nice to see something looking so real. Other people might come and have a look at it and think, that's disgusting, this woman is horrible and her life is awful and she should be ashamed of herself. And conceptual art is all about getting a response from people and people bringing their own ideas to the object. So, Tracy Ammon was telling a story of her bed. This is her dressed as Frida Kahlo in her bed. That looks a lot like Frida Kahlo. And incidentally, in this picture here, that's Tracy Ammon standing next to a Turner painting. That's it. So these artists are all kind of linked. So Tracy Ammon was telling a story with all of the objects around her bed. There were empty bottles, there were knickers, there were tissues, there were all sorts of things that I know why described there are tissues. the week. Why are there tissues? She was crying, she was crying, blowing her nose, wiping yeah. her eyes, crying. That's right. So it's telling a story of the event that happened in the bed. Just like Frida Kahlo is telling a story by adding her bed into her artwork, she's telling the story of the limitations on her life, this beautiful cosy prison that she was sort of trapped inside. Um, so what I want us to do today is to make a small sculpture of our own beds. So, okay, Elliot, can you sit down, please? Or, or, you see the pigeon. I know, but can you sit down on your chair, please? Okay. <laughs> so, when a sculptor makes an artwork, like a big bronze sculpture, or, <laughs> do you want me to sit down, please? Oh my goodness. Would you like some cat food? <laughs> this guy. Would you like some cat food? Some food made up of cats. Oh my He's goodness. Cat this food is a highly thing. professional art class. Okay, everyone sit down please. Sorry, okay. this is very hectic. When a sculptor makes a big bronze statue, or a piece of marble, or even like a, a sculpture that's made of lots of metal or something, what they'll do is they'll make a small version of it first, which is called a maquette. Now, Tracy Ammon didn't have to do that, because how did she make her artwork? Sleeping she did, it. Sleeping, that's yeah. right. She was, so instead of chipping away um, at marble or me melding something out of metal, can you go and sit down, please? Instead of doing that, the way that she created the art form was sleeping, it was crying, it was changing her clothes in her bed. Probably screaming into her pillows, probably just being really miserable. And punching her pillows. And all that emotion ended it up by, with. It was by emotion. Emotion. Emotion was the art form that she put into it, and the bed itself was the sculpture that was left behind in, after that event. In loads of movies and she things that... She took away the bed, basically. Shush. Yeah, yeah. In loads of movies and episodes that I watch, yeah. they say, don't let your emotions control you. But it's good to let your emotions control you. That's right, your emotions do control you. Yeah. Your emotions control everything you do. Yeah. You control your emotions. But no, you, can, you don't. Well, maybe you can control your emotions. Anyway, we're getting off topic, so what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that we are sculptors and we're making a piece of conceptual art. Now, while we can't all put our own beds in an art gallery and get people to come and make an assumption about, for me, it would be people would come and look at my bed and be like, wow, she drinks lots of cups of tea and she doesn't take any of the mugs downstairs to the kitchen. She must be very lazy. And, oh, it looks like she might have been eating chocolate while she was watching Netflix in bed last night. Which is actually what? <laughs> Which is actually what we did. Make a tiny sculpture of your bed. Have a think about the objects you'd include to tell a story. Favourite toys, cosy blankets or messy bits and pieces. You could use cardboard, bits of old boxes, paper, tissues, scraps of fabric. Make sure you also have lots of glue and tape to stick it all together. The thing we need to think about when we're making a model of our beds 
is what would you include in there to make it really feel like it's your bed? What makes it you? Is it a bit messy? Maybe you've got a really neat bed. What are you doing? Can you guys go, honestly, can you go and sit down at the... <sighs> right. What is it that makes your bed you? Maybe you've got a bunch of teddies that you always have in your bed. Um, so we're going to make our own beds, but we're going to make little versions of them because bringing your whole bed into a gallery isn't possible. So we're, we're going to make a maquette of our beds. So I have got here a bunch of bits of cardboard, all sorts Zorro, of this might be paper. Oh, I've made a bed by making a tiny little box. Um, you could make a bed by just getting a strip of cardboard and doing something like that to sort of give it its little legs. And then you can cut some sides. This is how I made this one. I've just done that and then I've taped on the edge like that so you can tape some edges on. I'll get back to that. Taco! Elliot, can you sit on your seat please? Um, so that's the base of my bed. I've made a bed head which I've stuck some yellow <laughs> tissue paper on because my bed looks like that. So what I've done is I've coloured some grey on a piece of paper and I'm going to fold that on and stick that onto the bed. Take it! Like that. Um, then I've made some pillows because my bed is really, really cosy. Taco, come on, we're not going outside. So I have made some little pillows. Now these are actually made from some cotton balls and tea bags. Tea bags. So this stuff is really good for making nice soft pillows. Make a duvet cover. I like it being like nice and crunchy because my bed is so messy and all tangled up. Because look, you can sort of drape it over your bed and glue it down like that. And then that looks, that like, looks like your bed. It does, doesn't it? So you can get some tissue paper, you can paint it to be the same colour as your duvet. Now, the thing that Elliot's going to use, Elliot has, um, can you pass me that? Yep. His, his duvet cover is actually a comic book. A comic book. <laughs> it's got comic book print on it. So he's going to take a page out of a comic and use that as his duvet cover. Um, then also, we have to remember all the messy things that we have around our beds. So, I've cut out a little pair of leggings. Ooh, I've got a cat head. A little a pajama top. I've there. got a cat bed. I've made, um, oh yeah, and then I've drawn some little bits because some I'm things are really hard to make. So, <laughs> I've drawn my slippers. And boots. And boots. I've drawn a mug. I'm gonna have need a few more mugs, I think. Oh yeah, you're gonna have a thousand. Got my phone, and I've also got a plate with a half-eaten crumpet on it because <laughs> sometimes also. <laughs> 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 sitting in the bed in the morning. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. Taco? No. We don't talk about that. Okay. <laughs> this dog is driving me crazy. The tea bags, kids. If you're doing this without your grown-ups with you right now. Um, please ask their permission to use the tea bags and don't just cut the bag, the tea bag on the table. Make sure you've got a bowl to put the tea in and you can save that later for later. In a tea pot. I'm just going to sort out this dog. Don't worry too much about what the base of your bed looks like because it's all about the decoration on top. But now I'm going to show you guys how to make a pillow. I really like doing fiddly little things like this. Yeah, my dad used to be a model maker. Um, for architects. <laughs> for architects, he used to make little buildings, and quite big buildings actually, for architects. And, and in the museum, yeah, he used to make models for museums. Um, okay, so if we just cut the tea bag, take the tea out of the tea bag, so you can just cut the end of the tea bag off, and so you've got a sort of end bit there. Like that. Tricky. Then you can get some cotton ball. Cotton ball. Cotton ball. Cotton ball. <laughs> cotton ball. 
and then depending on the type of cushion you want you can actually you can color it in so we're going to make a pink one just going to color the whole thing pink there we go that's how big i'm going to make my pillow i'm going to just put a little bit of blue um, around that edge there to make it into a little sack shape. Cat. There we go, and then so we stuff our cotton wool in, and then just close that end. And so we're going to glue that edge as well. Wait, no. I need like a brown one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.